Hello, hello. This is an update on Harry's visa situation, Prince Harry. Um, this is the, the, the a copy of the docket. Um, and that something happened here <clears throat> on the 15th of August, and that is what that is what we're going to talk about. Um, and just to let you see, this is the where it says Homeland Security, Department of Homeland Security and Heritage Foundation. So this is Harry's visa uh, issue. Uh, now, this is what happened on the 15th of August. There was this sealed ex parte order signed by Judge Carl J. Nicholas on the 15th of August, and it is sealed and only available to authorised persons. So we're going to talk about some myths around this, some, some untruths, and what all of this actually means. So the first thing, it does not mean... Uh, I've I've seen on on Twitter some people saying, "Oh yes, the sealed sealed order, the sealed and only available to authorized persons means that Harry's visa is only going to be available that, that Harry's visa is only going to be available to authorized persons." That's incorrect. The sealed nature of this order means that this order is only available to authorized persons. Okay, this is not a decision regarding the actual visa itself. Um, so he's he's created this order. So what does this ex parte mean? It means it's it's one sided. So for example, in a party, one of the parties can ask for uh, an ex parte communication with the judge. That means only they get to talk to the judge, which is not allowed. So it's it's one sided, and the fact that it's an order uh, means probably that the judge has asked one side because it's one-sided, ex parte, one side to do something or not to do something. So it could be that he's asked um, the U.S. Department of Homeland and Security to produce further documents. Uh, we just don't know. There's a some, He's asked one of them to do something. Now, it can also be, uh, the order can also be in, in relation to somebody who's not currently a party to the, the case. So neither the Heritage Foundation, nor the Department of Homeland and Se Homeland Security. So it could be uh, an order, for example, in respect of an interested party. So the judge might think that, for example, Harry, Prince Harry, is an interested party because release of this inf release of his visa application uh, would affect him. So Judge Nichols might be making an ex parte order um, for Prince Harry to, I don't know, object to the release of the information or not object, um, basically giving him the chance to object. That's very unlikely. It's it's not common for orders to be made against parties that are interested but not actually taking part in the in the case. But that that, that could be what that means. And what is this sealed and only available to authorized persons? Well, obviously the judge realizes that this is a very um, a case that has raised a lot of interest uh, in a lot of quarters and he doesn't want whatever he's he's seeking at the moment he does not want that made public for the moment he might unseal it at some 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 later stage right now he's needs further information or he needs something to be able to finalize his decision on whether or not to release prince harry's visa application documents and so usually um, the judge is not going to make an order um, in the in the middle of a, a case like this unless it's relevant to how he's going to make his final decision so my view uh, is that this is probably something that he's asking one of the parties to do or produce so that he can it can help him when he makes his ultimate decision so he might be asking heritage foundation for a bit more information who knows or he might be asking uh, Department of Homeland Security for further information. It's it's something something that he needs from one of the parties, and um, yeah, so to to make his final decision. So he hasn't made his decision yet, and this to me seems to indicate that at some stage he will be making a decision, probably to release at least some of the documentation that the Heritage Foundation has been asked has asked for. Uh, what we do know is he hasn't declined or denied 
the application to release the information. So it's it's still ongoing. It's still hopeful that some information might be released. And so um, I'm a lawyer with 30 years experience and my clients call me the legal lioness. And that is why I'm talking about this particular case uh, to, to help people understand what, what, the, what the decision here means. It's not a decision. It's just an order. It's not a final um, outcome of the case. So all of this begs the question, how is Harry actually, how did he enter the country and how is he staying in the country? Now, some people speculate that he's on an A1 visa, diplomatic visa, and you're not allowed to work when you're on the diplomatic visa or work outside of your diplomatic duties. And of course, he does, he is employed by Better Up and apparently he gets lots of money for that. So he, if he was here on a, or there in the US on an A1 visa, he might be in breach of the, the diplomatic um, provisions or the provisions in that in that uh, visa. I'm not sure. It might be that he came in on the A1 visa because at that time they were still not sure with, whether he would continue to represent the monarchy. But then obviously very soon after he arrived, um, it was clear that there was this falling out with the monarchy and he was no longer representing them. Uh, so there's really two things to Harry's uh, visa in respect of how easy in the country. One is how did he get into the country? So that might have been the diplomatic visa. And how is he allowed to stay in the country? Um, and obviously the normal kind of visa that you get, uh, you've got to you've got to ad admit if you've made this drug use or if you've made any drug use. And that's what the whole case is about, to see what he said on his visa application. If he came in on the diplomatic visa, he may not have had to fill in any paperwork because that may already have been in place uh, from previous visits and it might have been in place uh, between the diplomatic corps in the UK and the US government. Alternatively, of course, Harry might have come into the country on a tourist visa. Uh, the tourist visa, I understand that he would still have had to disclose about drug use. Um, but how is he staying in the country? And one thing I haven't heard many people talk about is, well, he is married to a U.S. citizen. So it could be that they started the, the process for uh, Harry to be able to be in the country on a, a spouse visa, being the, the, the husband of a U.S. citizen. So that is something that people I haven't heard many people talk about. And they could have applied before they got into the U.S., that might have been why they went to Canada first, or he could have applied, uh, you know, gone into the U.S. on a tourist visa and then very quickly applied uh, for the, the the spouse visa as the as a husband of somebody who is an American citizen. And in that case, it takes about one to one and a half years to process. So you would have thought that that would have issued ages ago because haven't they been out? They've been in the U.S. for four years, three to four years or something. So that seems unlikely that they would have applied for that in advance because if they had, then all of this secrecy and, and, and yeah, uh, intrigue around the visa would be probably alleviated. I don't know. There, there wouldn't be such speculation. It would be, I would, have, would think that it was, would be fairly easy for that information to be released. Oh, he's here on a visa because he's the spouse of an American. Uh, and, and I don't know what the, the drug questions might be on that American spouse visa. Okay, so it's ju I've just looked it up. Um, it seems that the questions about the drug use will be on all types of visas. I'm just looking at the, um, at the US site. Um, it says, it is generally required to disclose past drug use in a U.S. visa application. Uh, U.S. immigration authorities take a firm stance against drug-related activities due to their potential impact on public health and safety. Uh, while disclosing past drug use does not automatically result in denial of a U.S. visa, it is a factor that immigration officials consider when evaluating the applicant's eligibility. Um, Drug use can be viewed as a potential violation of U.S. migration laws and can raise concerns about an applicant's moral character and their ability to adhere to U.S. laws and regulations. So they're concerned that you're going to continue to break the law as a drug user um, by using illegal drugs. 
And then it goes on to say that the severity and recency of drug use, the type of drugs involved, and any related criminal history are all factors that can influence the outcome of a visa application. Um, yeah, so each case is assessed on an individual basis, taking into account the circumstances surrounding the drug use and the applicant's rehabilitation issues. So there it, it indicates that they don't want people who are addict, addicted to drugs getting visas of any type to come into the U.S. because they don't want the illegal drug taking to continue and um, because obviously that then funds um, illegal uh, drug drug rings or drug suppliers, drug sellers, drug dealers, that's the word. Uh, yeah, so that's what they're trying to avoid. So if you have used drugs and you put that on your on your visa application, but it's something that's historic and that you don't do anymore, then you're more likely to, you know, they, 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 they'll look at it, but it won't be the reason that they deny your visa. But if your, your drug use is ongoing, then that could be something that they would scrutinize more closely, generally, and that could be a reason to deny your visa. Um, and obviously we know in that book Spare, he said how he took mushrooms um, at Courtney Cox's house. So that was after he was already in the country. So therefore he was still using drugs when he, I don't know if it was just before, but certainly when he came into the US, he, he broke the US laws by using drugs in the US. So all of this means is <clears throat> in all types of visas, they look at the drug use, excepting for that diplomatic visa. And in the diplomatic visa, if you've got that, uh, you, you get diplomatic immunity against certain uh, crimes. And basically, they can't charge you with crimes if you're on the diplomatic visa. But if you're on the diplomatic visa, you can't... Um, you can't be working, and he is working for better up apparently. So it's it's a big mess basically. And the take home from this 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 order by the judge in the in the current case to reveal docu documents, Prince Harry's visa documents, is that we're not at the end of the process yet, but he might be getting to the end. He just needed some more information before he can make a final decision as to whether or not to release the visa application documents. And it's just the questions. That the Heritage Foundation asked was what did Prince Harry say about drug taking on his application so and I'm not sure if they asked for the type of visa as well that he applied for so the saga is ongoing there hasn't been a, a final decision so print media is reporting that there's a final decision it's not a final decision it's an ex parte order an order applying to one side Presumably that he needs more information, but it could be to do something or to stop doing something. Uh, so the, the the visa application request has not been denied. Um, it's still ongoing. That's the that's the take home message. I will update you when more happens. Thank you very much for listening.